mean the inner product is y. So what would be that? If I compute it, out of the ax would look like it. So if I have a matrix A and I would multiply it with the vector x, how is it going to look like? Also a vector column. It's going to be a vector. And how does this vector would look like? So what we can what you can see actually is that if you compute this in a product and you compute this in a product, okay, you transpose y, the both sides must be equal at. Okay? For all x and y form Rd. Rd. So, so, so hence there is a relationship between there's a kind of a special kind of a relationship between uh, you know A and A T. Okay. So what we're going to call, we're going to call that A T, like a, a transpose, is an and joint which we're going to denote by A star of A. So it's like it's adjoint of A. Adjoint of A. Okay? And this adjoint has beautiful property right? So we have defined adjoint. No, we haven't defined it. So I'm saying that there is an example actually that if you take a matrix, then for the matrix we have an adjoint. So adjoint is something which satisfies such kind of you know inequality that okay. If you if you have you know a x y and you take take this a onto the other side roughly, roughly okay, then you're gonna get something which is which is going to depend on a and y of course uh, and you call such an operator for which you know such kind of expression or such kind of equality hold as the adjoint of what you call A. So we know what we know from here, like what, what comes as an outcome, that for a matrix the adjoint is its transpose. Okay? And you can say or you can ask to generalize this person to infinite dimension actually. So in other words, can we have an infinite dimensional matrix, okay, roughly, which is obviously it's going to be an operator? And what would be the adjoint of such an operator? Okay. So let me let me let me define. Okay. What if? Okay. What what if? Let me add one thing. What if? Like A is symmetric actually. In other words, A is same as A transpose. So you can have such matrices. Okay. So in that case. What you're gonna say, you're gonna say that the adjoint of the matrix is A is itself. In other words, you can say A is self-adjoint. Okay. Would be a good name to give it? Yes. That A is self-adjoint. So it's an like adjoint of itself actually. Okay. So what's a definition? Then we're going to talk about very specific kind of um, adjoints. Okay. So so I'm going to say that for a given operator, roughly, okay, for a bounded operator, okay, A from H to K, where H comma K are Hilbert spaces. H comma K are Hilbert spaces, then, then an operator, another operator called A star, which is not from H to K but K to H actually. Okay? Is called is called a joint of operator A if such kind of an equality holds. In other words, so A x y is same as x 
the star vector. Okay? And this is true for all x in h and y in y in okay. h. Now, question is obviously that do such an operator exist? Do such an operator exist? The answer is yes, sir. And why do A star always exist for a bounded operator? See why this is the case actually. So consider a bounded operator from H into K and consider a bounded functional at phi, which is from H cross K into R, and define this bounded operator as phi of uh, f comma g where f is from h and g is from k as a f and g. Now what is what is the key requirement for restructure theorem? So you must have a bounded function. Bounded function. So if you have a bounded functional then, then if there exists a unique element such that that fun bounded functional can be written as a unique duality. Okay. So, is this a bounded operator? So, do what? I can try to compute. It's, you know, what do you call norm? So, so what would be this? So, A, F, and J. Okay. And the what are you going to get? You're going to get norm of A, F. Okay. Norm of G, but it itself is bounded actually. Okay, <coughs> it itself is bounded. So if it is bounded, I can say that this is less than or equal to the norm of A times the norm of F times the norm of G. Actually. Okay. So what does this show? This shows that functional is this, this functional now, this functional is bounded action, okay, with the constant C. And if this is the case, then I would say that there exists by these pressure theorem. So what we are doing now is a what do you call theory of? Uh, a joint operator, like a very fundamental results of a joint operator. Okay? So, by this pressure theorem, there exist there exist one. An element, okay. small it. you know, there exists an element. Uh, there exists an element. Okay, H where? Sir, it's last Okay. All right. If there exists an element, let me let me put it this way. So I have A F and A F and G. H, so that's my that's my bounded operator. Okay, so there exists an element such that 
this. So we can write this as F. F with that, what do you call unique H actually? Okay. So there exists a unique H. Okay. In what? In H cross K. H cross K, not H cross K, H. but H. K. Let me call this as K actually because you know it's, it's in space K. Such that that this can be written as the duality, like such kind of a duality. But I can make this H more explicit actually. What I can say that okay, this element is dependent on the operator A. Okay. So it's because of you know because of the operator A, this element exists. So it depends on the operator A. So in other words, it's operator A, but like, okay, let's give it a name, A star, but it also depends on G, G actually. So let's call it, what do you call? A star G. So in other words, I'm denoting this element by, what do you call, this number, A star G, where A star is what? So A star is like an operator which takes values from K, K and throw them in what do you call H. So, 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 what does these simple calculation shows that for a bounded operator between Hilbert spaces, there is always an operator what do you call A star. Okay, uh, from K into H such that this is true. And you call such operator, so like this A star is called adjoint of A. This is called adjoint of A. So it's a straight generalization of what you saw before for the matrices adjoint. Operator of A. Now, is it making sense? So you have an operator, so bounded operator A, and using that bounded operator, you define a functional, and we show that functional is also bounded. And if it is bounded, then you have Riesz-Fechner theorem, which allows you have the existence of an element, unique element in K, such that uh, you know you can have that duality. And I'm saying that okay, I'm denoting that unique element by this symbol. Okay, what you call A star G. So it's like why I'm calling it A star okay, because it depends on A. Okay, and to differentiate it from the star, you know, A, I'm putting a star on it actually. So and you know, it also depends on what do you call G essentially? Okay. So I mean if you see the book, he's proving first a lemma and then he's giving these calculations. So I mean if you wish you can read that lemma, I'm just directly giving what you call essentially these calculations. Now, what are some of the basic properties of this A star? So in other words, A star is something which is so A star is not something explicit actually. So you don't have a formula for it. You know, A star. So it's like you recognize A star from, so it's like any operator which satisfies such an inequality for all f and g, you call that as the, you know, the adjoint of A or A star. So A star is defined through property. So it doesn't have an explicit formula. Okay. In some cases it might have, but like at least, you know, in abstract sense it doesn't have an explicit formula. Then you Yes. Sir? So the element which exists in H cross K should be H cross? K should be H cross 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 K should so what are some of the key properties of A star? Okay. So the first of all, A star is linear. Okay. 
it's linear. Why it must be linear? So in other words, I would like to show that if I have a star of Five plus you know f plus g, okay, it must be same as a star, a star of f, you know, f plus a star of g. So how can I show it? How can I show it? G1 plus G2 because we are reserving F for the first component. So how can I prove it? Consider that F comma so I can of G1 plus G2. What, what can I do that I can use this duality? So we can use this expression. So what should I do? So I'm F saying that consider F comma A star of G applied over G1 plus G2. Then distributive. So this is same as a f and g1 plus g3. Same as linear and second component. So what are going to get? A g1 plus f g2. A f g1 plus f g2. A f g2. Which is what do you say that okay if you take a star on other side you are going to get a star g1 plus a star g2 and pull this thing on other side actually so what you gonna get a star g1 plus a star g2 so you get f a star g1 plus g2 okay i'm not specifying that okay from where f and g1 and g2 are i'm assuming that you know it already so you're gonna get f a star g1 g1 plus plus f a star, a star g2 g2 which is f which is same as f a star, a star g1 plus a star g2 a star g2 okay and this is true for all f actually so in other words it's going to be so it's like it's true for all f, okay? And I can take this difference on both sides. Zero there. You know, then, you know, what does this shows essentially is that a star g1 plus g2 is same as a star g1 plus a star g2. A star g2. A star g2. And you can show the other property as well. Not only this, but it's a pretty good exercise to show. <coughs> It's a pretty good exercise to show that not compactness, but uh, that if I have the sum of you know two operators and I'm, I want to compute their adjoint, then this is same as that you compute their adjoint separately and sum them. Okay, and similarly, so, it, so it, it's an exercise, so you know, you must do it. So it's alpha A is alpha times, it's a star. Okay. And here is pretty something interesting, and which meets with our intuition as well, because for example in finite dimension, uh, that joint is transpose. So we know that, you know, if we start, is same as B star A star, B star, A star not A star B star, okay? So it's going to be B star A star Okay? How are you going to prove this property? So, so imagine that if I have a B star operating on to G Okay? So what must be the next step? So it must be same as that A B operated on to F and gives you G. Then what should I do? Send A on the other side. So I can have B F, B, F and A star G. A star G. And then B yeah. go to A star on the other side. So you can 
get f and b star a star g and this is true for all f and hence these two must be equal actually okay so similarly try to prove these basic properties I think there are pretty good exercises about the advanced operators So you can ask, you know, an interesting question. You can say that, okay, you know, if A is compact, what about A star? Will it be compact? And the answer is yes, actually, it must be compact. Okay. So, here the result, and tell me that why this should be true. I would like to have proof from you. So let now A is an operator from H to K, where H and K are in better spaces. If A is of finite rank, okay, is finite dimensional, finite dimensional are compact. then A star is also compact. Okay? Finite dimensional case you have to prove for yourself. How can I show that if A is compact then A star must also be compact? So in other words, if A can be approximated by the sequence of uh, finite dimensional operators, why A star can also be an approximated by a sequence of finite dimensional operators. So as I am saying, for the finite dimensional case, you have to do it for yourself. Okay? Because this would be like a matrix actual case. So it's not going to be much different from it. So it's an exercise. So I am saying that if a, you know, operator is finite dimensional, then it must be. Okay? And finite dimensional, then A star must be find a dimensional compact too. Okay? So what I would like to prove is that okay, if A is compact then A star is also compact. Okay? Why this must be the case? So what so what if A is compact? So since A is compact so there is boundary exit process. So there exists because these both are Hilbert spaces. So we know that compactness is same as finite approximately. Okay. So what are you going to say? There exists a sequence of finite dimensional operators such that okay, A n minus A goes to 0 as n goes to 0. We did a theorem, I mean, I mentioned a theorem afterwards, which says that, you know, agar after class, so if you have, so you know, you know, you know, from the Banneke space to the Hilbert space, if you have an, you know, operator which is compact, which is compact, then it must be finitely approximable. So it's sufficient to, so it's like, since K and H are Hilbert spaces, so they are complete both. So, if, you know, if A is compact, then it must be finitely approximable as well. And hence, you know, such a sequence exists, or finite, such a finite dimension sequence exists, such that, you know, this is true. Then, if this is the case, give me, give me 
the sequence that approximates is not a Then the tarif is linear from z. Obvious thing that you can do is that, okay, take the stars of all these, okay, and try to th think that, you know, whether it works or not. So, so, so think about A star and take the difference with it, A n stars actually. So this must be same as the norm of, okay, A minus A n stars. Or the star, okay. And what does this would show? Ah, okay. So one thing that we missed here is this. It must be added into the properties that if you compute the norm of A, okay, for a compact, you know, operator, then it must be same as the norm of adjoint actually. The norm of A and its adjoint are same. equal. So this is all. This must be also added into your list of simple exercises. And, and if this is the case, then we are done. So, so this is same as a n minus. And this goes to zero. And this goes to goes to infinity. Okay, that's a pretty proposition. So let's do some examples of a joint operator. We haven't done any example yet. Uh, See what are some of the examples of So the first example that we already did said that, okay, if you have a matrix, which is Aij from D prime cross D. In other words, I'm taking E, or maybe H, as Rd prime, I know it's in the space, and I'm taking K as Rd, and I know that it's also in the space. So if A is this, this is like a matrix spin, then we know that in so it's like any bounded linear operator from Rd prime to Rd is a matrix actually. Okay? So all operators are matrix. So you have this operator, okay? And, uh, and what? What would be the conjugate of it? So see, as we found that, you know, as we found that as Ax to y, okay, is same as x and A transpose y. Okay. For all x in Rd prime and y in Rd. Okay. So this means that the conjugate or the adjoint of A star is basically this matrix A transpose. Okay. So A transpose is the adjoint of Take H to be L2 and K to be L2, so both to be L2. So the second example. Okay. And consider left and right shift operators. Okay. So what was right shift shift operator? So like where it maps on to X1, X2, X3, and so on and so forth. Where X1, X2, X3 is an element in L2. Then it must be same as x2 x3 x2 x3 or maybe 0 x1 x2 x3 it will be left right x2 x2 x3 right x2 x3 x4 so it's going to be x2 x3 x3 and x4 and so on and so forth and how about left shift that will be left x1 x2 x3 and so on and so forth 0 x1 going to be 0, x1, x2, and so on, and so forth. Okay? And then I'm saying that, okay, let us compute, what do you call, 